Today's episode is brought to you by Progressive, where drivers who save by switching save nearly $750 on average. Quote now at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12-month savings of $744 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2022 and May 2023. Potential savings will vary. Hi, folks. We've got a bit of an unusual sponsor for this episode, The Jordan Harbinger Show, which is a podcast that we love over here. Yes, I realize everyone online and off recommends a podcast that you have to listen to, but you're already listening to me, and I am telling you that you should be listening to The Jordan Harbinger Show, too. Jordan's show, which Apple named one of its best of 2018, is aimed at making you a better informed, more critical thinker, so you can get a sense of how the world actually works and come to your own conclusions about what's happening, even inside your own brain. He talks to everyone from neuroscientists to counterfeiters to astronauts, authors, thinkers, and performers. In one episode, Jordan talks to a hostage negotiator from the FBI who offers techniques on how to get people to like and trust you. Uh, In another episode, he talks to an art forger who was on the run from the feds and the mafia. Uh, A couple that I would recommend would be Zach Wienersmith's episode about colonizing Mars, and then T-Pain's episode called You Can't Auto-Tune Your Way to Happiness. They're both spectacular episodes. Jordan's a good interviewer. He has great guests and is focused on pulling useful, practical insights out of his subjects. I'm definitely a fan. We really enjoy this show, and we think you will as well. There's a lot to like. Check out jordanharbinger.com slash start for some episode recommendations or search for the jordan harbinger show that's h-a-r-b as in boy i-n as in nancy g-e-r on apple podcasts spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts a friend who went crazy one time. Me and my girlfriends, we all made a deal that when we graduated from high school, we would get the hell out of Tucson. So we did. We all went to Phoenix, two and a half hours away, but it felt like the other side of the world. I got a job at a, ugh, I got a job at a Jack in the Box. That was rough. But it was my new life in a new city, and that was nice. Anyway, one friend of mine never made it out, Rosa. She just stayed with her parents, could never really pull the ripcord. She just got stuck. She was always a little weird. So one day, years later, one of my girlfriends says, Hey, did you hear about Rosa? She moved to Needles. I don't know if you know anything about needles, but it's a perfect blend of small town and abandoned train yard. 120 degrees there in the summer, and there's little tiny bugs crawling all over everything there. I don't even know what they are, just these little black dots moving around on the surface of everything, no matter where you go. You ask someone about the bugs and they just say, oh yeah, it happens sometimes. And that's it. One weekend, I drove up there to see her. I don't know why. I just had to know what happened. She didn't even have an address. She was living out of a camper van, selling handmade souvenirs on the roadside. She she would go into the desert and look for animal skulls which there was a lot of because it was 120 degrees and everything was dying. She'd take these sun-bleached skulls and lay them out on a Navajo blanket across the street from a truck stop. She kind of made a killing, actually. We sat there outside her camper van and we drank a bottle of tequila as the sun went down. We were in our 20s at that point, but she had been out in the sun so long. She looked like she was 50. Cracks everywhere on her face. 
I asked her, Rosa, what happened? How'd you end up in fucking needles selling skulls across from a truck stop? I was stuck, Gloria. I didn't know what to do. So I thought I'd just do the craziest thing. And here I am, light years from home, and my shitty stories from Arizona are still relatable. I really am sorry. We've been floating here for three days, Ava. You've been saying you're sorry for three days. I tried to explain to you why. Yeah, it's the trying part I have a problem with. You haven't succeeded yet. I told you. Do you know why you haven't succeeded? Because you don't know why you did it. Effie told me to do it. Right, right. You keep saying that. Effie told me to. Can you think of a less reliable source of information than Effie and Zebulon? They thought they were sportscasters one time. Remember that? I know they're not reliable. That's why I did it. What does that mean? You don't care what it means. You just want to be pissed at me. I do just want to be pissed at you. Then I'll shut up and you can be pissed at me. Fine. What the hell is Leaf making in the parking lot? I don't know. Him and Casper have some kind of plan. It's probably stupid. (laughs) That's a significant parking lot for me. You convinced me to stay while we stood in that parking lot. Remember that? Yes. We smoked a cigarette in 14 million BC. You showed me 20 foot tall mushrooms and said, you should stay. I remember. Maybe shut up next time. Okay, we're ready. Come on. Casper. Well, let's go see what new bullshit this is. Okay, first of all, don't judge a book by its cover. Well, what should I judge it by? Your first question is going to be, is that made from kitchen appliances? And the answer is no, not entirely. Is it a robot? It's a suit. A suit for what? Um, you know how sometimes plans evolve and then you look back and think, whoa, how did we get here? Oh, God. A suit for what? We're shooting Ava into space. Well, look at that. I didn't freak out. I guess I'm used to things now. Seriously, Casper? Seriously. I know it sounds crazy. You're that pissed at me? I'm extraordinarily pissed Before we start yelling, there's an explanation. Ava, we are not condemning you to the Phantom Zone. There's a reason for this. I bet it's a great one. We're on the edge of this big, malevolent thing, right? The gravitational pull has got to be massive, but we're staying still. Also, it's giving off a repeating radio signal. Everything gives off a repeating radio signal. It's a repeating radio signal that's spelling out your name in American Morse code. Whoa, so that big thing out there is asking for Ava? And very deliberately not taking us all into it. There is no way I am getting in that thing. We tested it. It works fine. I don't give a shit. You're out of your mind. This is what you wanted, isn't it? To be launched into space in something made from a Cuisinart? No. Because it's dangerous? Yes. That's funny. I don't remember you consulting us on whether or not we'd like to be put in danger. That's not the same thing. No, it's the same thing. I've decided it's the same thing. Isn't that frustrating when someone decides something important without asking you? Look, I'd be worried about it too if I didn't build this rig myself. It's very safe. I know it looks kind of like a trash monster, but it's got an air recycler, onboard guidance system, it's got its own thrusters. Thrusters? Made from what? Cooking spray cans. But look, thrust (gasps) is thrust. The gravity will do most of the work. And what's the plan for getting me back? Or are you all planning to sacrifice me to the great volcano in the sky? We didn't have a plan to get out of the supermassive black hole. You weren't worried then? Yes, but... But what? How's this different? What's different is you want me to get in that thing. Ava, 
I'm sorry. You've got to get in the suit. What? Are we in this mess because of you? Yes or no? Yes. Then I'm sorry. You break it, you buy it. (sighs) Fuck that! Look, I know everyone's pissed at me and wants me to suffer somehow, but that doesn't mean you get to turn me into Voyager 2. Can we please all just stay calm and trust that a solution will come to us? There has to be one less ridiculous than this one. Get her in the suit! You motherfuckers, let me go! Get her legs! Ow! Ow! She's stronger than she looks! It's hey. really going to be okay! Stop it! Ow, 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 ow. that's my ear! Put, put me down, goddammit! Open it! I am going to make you fucking... She's just this. kicking me in the face, guys! We're ready! Okay, here no, go! Okay, uh, one, uh, two, uh, three! Fuck you! She's in! I am going to rip... You are balls off. Oh, don't threaten me with a good time. You wanted to understand the mysteries of the cosmos. Now's your chance to do it firsthand. Please, tell me you put machine guns on this thing. Sorry, Doctor. Just you, some cans of cooking spray, and the great beyond. Exactly how Carl Sagan imagined it. Leif. Hi. Ava. You are next on my list of people to kill. Again, it's going to be fine. It's a very safe suit. Why can't I move the arm? It's not fully powered up yet. Oh, do I want to know what you're powering this thing with? Is it Crisco? No. Though now that you mention it, vegetable oil is an interesting choice for deep space combustion. It doesn't have to be pressurized, and it's non-flammable. Leaf, am I going to die in this? No. No. It's ready to go, for sure. This has hydraulics, Leaf. You just... Whipped up some hydraulics? Sadly, the hydraulics came from a dearly departed robot friend of ours. <gasps> you salvaged Bufar? Hey, don't get sentimental about it. He would have wanted it this way. He loved helping. Oh my god, I am basically in a skin suit right now. You buffalo build me! You won't have to do anything. Just let the onboard guidance handle the trip, okay? Ava... I'm sorry. You wrote a check and we kind of have to cash it now. Whatever. Give us a second, guys. Okay. Come on, Leif. You enjoying this? You feel like you're getting the last laugh? I asked you for one thing. For this place to open every day at six. It's been three days. I had to do something. You didn't have to do anything. But now I have to do something. So I'm going to use this hand truck, wheel you to the edge of the parking lot, and jettison you into space. Leaf says the suit will take over once you've hit zero G. I really hope I never see you again. I know. Goodbye, Evan. Here we go. the peace and quiet is kind of nice. Hi, I'm Leiflin, your onboard guidance computer. Motherfucker. Seriously? It looks like you're trying to navigate in zero G. Would you like some help with that? Please tell me you have other voice options. Sorry, bro. I can't help you with that one. It looks like you're trying to navigate in zero G. Would you like some help with that? Yes, please. Let's identify your destination. Okay. Let's see what this thing can do. Identify nearby celestial bodies. You are near two celestial bodies. 
Midnight Burger is approximately 8,000 meters from your location. Would you like to go there? Never again. What else? Second celestial body is 56,000 kilometers away. File name, Big Malevolent Thing. That's what we're looking for, I guess. Go there. Thruster fuel is insufficient for this destination. Just point us in the direction of it and the gravitational pull will do the rest. Destination locked. Firing thrusters. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like this. I'm getting Captain Janeway vibes. Time to destination. Two hours, 47 minutes. I can't believe he salvaged Bufar for this. Many of Bufar's undamaged logic boards are now a part of my processor. If you like, you can call me Steve. I'm not calling you Steve. That's a sacred name now. Sure thing, bro. Yeah, I guess every scientist has a moment when they're cast out from society, but, like, this is overdoing it! How long to our destination again? Two hours, 47 minutes. Looks like we've got some time to kill before whatever this thing is eats me alive. Would you like to enjoy an in-flight movie on your heads-up display? Oh, God, what did Leaf program for an in-flight movie? Wait, let me guess. Barbarella. Today's in-flight movie is all about Eve. Oh, shit. Leaf, you are not forgiven just because you loaded my favorite movie into this sardine can. Would you like to watch it now? Sure. Fire it up. You know what my favorite line is? Your favorite line is, funny business. No, 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 career. you're just going to fuck it up. It's like this. Funny business, a woman's career. The things you drop on your way up the ladder so you can move faster. You forget you'll need them again when you get back to being a woman. Ava? Ava, wake up. Ava! Huh? Oh, shit! Fuck! What happened? Sorry about that. Had to make some executive decisions. Guidance computers can't make executive decisions. Well, when I say I'm a guidance computer... Never mind. I... What happened? Estimates of our arrival time at the big malevolent thing were off. In an effort to conserve oxygen, I took advantage of the fact that you had fallen asleep and brought down the solar visor. Well, raise the damn visor. Where are we? What the fuck? We're back at the diner? Sensors indicate otherwise. How so? The atmosphere is 90% ammonia. Yikes. Everything's dusty. That's not from ammonia. What is that from? Analyzing surroundings. Matter in this area is unstable, not meant to be interacted with. We're in a simulation. I see. The magic of the theater. It's Casper! Hello? Okay, act one. Casper's first day. Hello? Oh, sure. He can touch the radio. Hey, analyze those frequencies. Scanning. Looks like the radio is cycling through frequencies at a very high rate. Like it's looking for something. Like it's learning. My dear, I was thinking the other day of the story of Jonah. Must we, dearest? I know that this story is not your most favored story from the good book. If you have had one too many unfortunate catfishing excursions as I have, you do not find yourself drawn to the story of Jonah. Yes, the catfish in the St. Francis do have a tendency to clamp down a bit hard, don't they? One time when I was noodling, a flathead had bit down so hard upon me that I thought he'd never let go. I thought I'd have to spend the rest of my time on this earth with a fish arm. Oh, he looks sad, but I'm still mad at him. Hey. Casper, you suck! 
The simulation does not appear to be interactive. I know. But while the prospect of being trapped in the belly of a fish for many a day may give one the oogies, we must take care not to discard the story of Jonah. Jonah is there to remind us that the Lord's paths are infinite. And should you refuse his call, as Jonah did, you have simply sent yourself down yet another of his chosen paths. Increase in tachyonic particles. We're about to move. Though it should be noted that refusing the first path sends you down the path with the fish guts in it, so maybe listen to the Lord's words the first time. Indeed, my love. Whoa! Okay, if they start playing It's a Small World, I quit. So what can you tell me about this place, Effie? I can tell you that it is a great human construct that hangs in the sky and becomes a crossroads for many people from distant lands as they make their way across God's creation. So it's a space station. Is that not what I just said? <laughs> sure. Hey, welcome to Midnight Burger. Have a seat anywhere. You serving Earth food? Hey, it's our boy. Uh, yeah, all Earth food. Cool. You from Earth? Yeah. You? Yeah. How'd you get out of the system? Uh, long-ass story. <laughs> yeah, same here. Listen, since you're from Earth, um, <laughs> I've got to warn you. If you're not from Earth, I'm great at cooking Earth food. But if you're from Earth, my cooking is terrible. Aw, look at this bromance. Which one's the Winter Soldier? Solid burn. Hey, are you guys hiring? I'm a cook. I'm on a Truscan ice hauler right now, and it's kind of miserable. Truscans are great, but they love singing these, like, sea shanties, and Truscans don't have complex breath control, so they only sing one note. It's driving me crazy. That sounds pretty rough. I do like moving around, so being stuck at a space station might not be that great. But it would be nice for my Earth references to not fall on deaf ears. So I'm good staying put for a while. Um, how to explain this? Hey, I was watching that. I wanted them to do something embarrassing that I could use against them. For science. Is that Gloria's car? Oh, hi Gloria. You mm, also mm, suck. Mm, 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 mm. Hey, Caesar. How are you holding up? Oh, you did? Great, I'm glad. How much is it? It's that plus 600? Okay, great, that's good. You guys, you guys can live on that, right? Inez gets it too? Okay, good. Whew. Whew. I was worried about you guys. No, I'll be fine. Caesar, I'll be fine. I'm not going over this again. It's a little harder to file for unemployment when you own the damn place. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do, Caesar. It was... It was my dream to own that place. It's all I ever wanted. We were open for six months, and then it all gets shut down because of what? Because of a bat in China? I, I don't even know how to talk about that. Look, I, I don't know how long this bullshit is going to last, but when it's finally over, people are going to be like, cool, let's get back to normal. Let's do normal shit. Normal for me is being a waitress who can't forget the time she had a restaurant for six months. That's normal for me. I don't want to go back to normal, Caesar. I'm never going back again. Hug your kids for me. I, I got a job interview. Yes, I do. I know what I just said. I'm just doing it to get out of town. <laughs> I honestly don't even know where I am. It's called Midnight Diner or something. Look, go back to your life. Hang out with your kids. You're going to be sick of them in a month. Okay, I get it. Now I'm going to see my first day at the diner, and then I'll, what? Learn the true meaning of Christmas, I guess. 
hey, this is my house. This is my house in Ithaca. Oh, no, this is my farewell party. Oh, oh, this is bad. Not detecting any new hazards. N no, it's bad because I got wasted and don't remember much of it. Oh, God, that's me. Oh, God, am I making a speech? Everyone, can I get your attention for a moment, please? Thank you so much for coming to my farewell party, though I am convinced that 60 to 65% of you are here to make sure you don't miss out on any gossip. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint, but I won't be doing anything more embarrassing than actually being a professor at this shit sack of a university. Today, I officially transitioned into emeritus status, the flaming Viking boat of academia. I did so under vicious rumors that I have lost my mind, which I shall wear as a badge of honor. I am proud to join the ranks of other nutty professors like Paracelsus, who believed in giants, Tycho Brahe, who wore a copper prosthetic nose after losing his real one in a fistfight, and Pythagoras, who had an inexplicable fear of beans. <laughs> You only get one chance to make a parting statement, so here goes. As we struggle to understand the universe, we may need to consider the idea that the universe is struggling to understand us. That our curiosity about the cosmos may be reciprocated. Do our telescopes pointed skyward pose a question? And are the ebbs and flows of the starways an attempt at an answer. Are the scientists and their subject like two lovers in the dark, stumbling towards each other, hoping to find some skin? Well, that got a little sexy, didn't it? Uh, that song, where's that song coming from? Unclear, not from this simulation. Can you trace it? We need to go towards it. Judging by the tachyonic spike I'm getting, Looks like we're headed there now. This episode is brought to you by June's Journey. Hey, everyone. It's Joe. I want to congratulate you all for making it through Meltdown May. Now, if you're not familiar, Meltdown May is when everyone, especially on the internet, melts down. I myself sailed through Meltdown May this year. And do you know how I did it? By keeping my mind occupied by non-internet things, such as everyone's favorite podcast, Midnight Burger, and games like June's Journey. In June's Journey, you play June Parker, a young woman on a quest to uncover the truth behind her sister's tragic murder. As you navigate through the game's beautifully detailed scenes of the 1920s, you'll gather clues, solve mind-teasing puzzles, and reveal scandalous family secrets that will keep you hooked until the very end. Now, what I love about June's Journey is how immersive the storyline is. Each chapter uncovers a new piece of the mystery, taking you from the parlors of New York to the sidewalks of Paris. The game's unique features like customizing your own luxurious island estate and joining a detective club to chat and play with others makes the experience even more engaging. I find myself playing June's Journey whenever I have a spare moment, like when dinner is in the oven or when Finley is watching one of her TV shows about people being murdered in a major American city. The game's challenging puzzles and intriguing plot twists keep me coming back for more, and I can't wait to see where the story takes me next. So if you're ready to put your detective skills to the test and escape into a world of mystery and intrigue, then I highly recommend downloading June's Journey. Escape into a world of mystery. Download June's Journey for free today on iOS and Android. Strange happenings are occurring in the world of Exandria. Slayed creatures and beasts from days of yore are returning to the land of the living, and it's up to a band of unlikely heroes to re-slay them. Welcome to the Re-Slayer's Take. 
Join Jasmine Bular, Jasmine Chung, Jasper Cartwright, and Caroline Lux alongside Game Masters Nick Williams and me, George Primavera, in this Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition role-playing adventure through Critical Role's fantasy world of Exandria. But don't worry, you won't need to know the rules to follow this story. All you need to know is that nothing the players do is scripted or planned, and their fates are determined by their own cleverness and the role of a 20-sided die. So what the heck are you waiting for? Adventure awaits in the Reslayers Take. New episodes drop weekly on Mondays wherever you stream your podcasts. Hey, babe. How you been? Are you high again? Am I? Your lungs are full of smoke, and there's a lit joint in your hand. (coughs) Don't make assumptions. You really think now is a good time to get high? We're both about to torpedo our careers, honey. How is this not a good time to get high? Valid point. Where were you? I was in town. What's going on in town? I went by the hospital. Danny? Just to be sure. A hurricane hits here every 18 months. All the hospitals have generators. Probably all the houses, too. And I confirmed that because I needed to, okay? It's not hurricane season. They're not expecting us to knock their power out. It'll just be for a few minutes. They'll be okay. How many times do we need to go over this? I know. I know. I'm done. Come over here. Smoke this joint and get normal with your wife. Come on. Okay. I'm going to miss this cheap-ass weed when we're gone. We should enjoy it while we can. Puerto Rico, who knew? What are we listening to? This is another wonderful find at the dime store in town. I hear everyone back home is listening to cassette tapes now. I don't buy it. They said that about 8-tracks. Look what happened. Besides, they sound like shit. And as people who listen for a living, we should be more discerning, don't you think? No offense, but this sounds like shit, too. Well, this sounds like shit because it's a 78 RPM that's been to hell and back. Fine. So, let's talk. Okay. We need a plan. Do we? And I was thinking... What about California? What about California? Yeah, lots of work for scientists in California. Not for scientists like us. They need aerospace nerds, not astrophysicists. Besides, they would be defense contracts, and how do we feel about defense contracts? I know. I'm just trying to come up with something. Something will come up. We've got money saved. We were going to buy a house with that money. Well... Now we're going to do something else with it. Did you marry me so I would do all the worrying? No. I married you because my mamma told me to. And what do you think your mamma would say about blacking out an entire town for 15 minutes to shoot a radio signal into the sky? Well, I think she would say, Willow, you can do anything you want, and your papa and I are still going to love you. And then she would add, unless you become a papist. (laughs) Besides, you're forgetting that she and my pa did a revival radio show for years without any approval from the FCC or whatever they called it back then. All right. We better do this before I come to my senses. Time's a-wasting. I'll throw the switch and reverse the polarity. You stay at the terminal. Okay. Should I bar the door to keep the fuzz out? There isn't a police officer for miles, and we're the only ones at the observatory today. I know. That was just one of my fun jokes. Whee! Okay. I'm reversing polarity, and now I am powering up. Was that it? That was it. That didn't feel like it. Not to you and me, but everything in Arecibo just went dark. I was expecting some circuits frying or something. Babe, we've got 15 minutes. Send the signal. Sorry. Okay, 
if this doesn't get their attention, I don't know what will. Do you remember the big ceremony we had the first time they sent this signal? Oh my god, we thought it was so stupid. I think <laughs> I called it... Uh, Jacking off in the general direction of M13. Yes, yes you did. <laughs> I mean, technically, I was right. A Byzantine, indecipherable signal sent to a star cluster seven parsecs away. It's not science. What do we think this is? Dick Tracy's watch? <laughs> That's you, drunk, later that night. I was so mad. People were excited, and I was mad about it. Dick Tracy's watch, though. Because he talks into it. I'm sure it sounded really snappy in my head. And then... For the rest of the night, you were the Fermi's paradox guy. I was, Ooh. I know. Everybody hated you all night. I was so proud. And now here we are, destroying our careers so we can broadcast the signal we made fun of. I have to say, I've been impressed with the way you just jumped into this little scheme of ours. You're usually the cautious one. I'm full of surprises. I'm strongly considering taking our marriage seriously for the first time. <laughs> Find that unlikely. Hello? The fuck? Hello? Um, your signal is annoying. Can you shut it off, please? Did we do all this just to bounce off the fucking ionosphere? There's no way we didn't punch through the ionosphere. Well, that didn't sound like a voice from the beyond. Oh, hang on, I, I have to hook up a mic. Leaflet, what is the signal? I've identified the signal. This is known as the Arecibo message. Broadcast from the Arecibo radio telescope in Puerto Rico in 1974. What is that? Why are we hearing it? Not sure, bro. Can you please edit your auto responses to take out the word bro? Sure thing, boss. Better. Here we go. <clears throat> Whoever is receiving this signal, can you identify yourself, please? Um, hi. We're currently conducting scientific research and need this frequency clear, please. Can you identify yourself? Well, look at Mr. Fancy Pants conducting scientific research. Can you identify yourself, please? You first. Jesus. This is the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico. We're sending a test broadcast and you're on our frequency. Can you identify yourself, please? Arecibo? The radio telescope? How much time do we have? Not much. Ma'am, identify yourself, please. Not sure how much time we have, boss. Wait. Arecibo? Arecibo's been decommissioned. What are you talking about? This station hasn't been decommissioned. What are you talking about? The whole thing collapsed in 2020, pal. Who are you really? Oh. Uh, in 2020? Yes, the whole damn thing fell into the jungle. The cable snapped. Something about metal fatigue, I guess? In 2020? Yes. Who am I talking to? It's 1976. Ugh, oh, snails. Really? Really. Looks like we may be in a temporal rift, boss. You think? Who am I talking to right now? I'm Daniel. I'm here with my wife, Willow. We work at the observatory. We're astronomers. Can you please, for the love of God, identify yourself? Oh, fine. My name is Dr. Ava Maddox, and I'm... What am I? Shit, it's her. Oh! I'm Professor Emeritus of Theoretical Physics at Cornell University. That works. Oh, wait. No, I'm not. I will be Professor Emeritus at Cornell. I guess to you, I'm a one-year-old with a terrible mother. Doctor, we've been getting your notes. What is your location? You've been... what? We think they're your notes. We can't decipher them. What is your location? Wait, wait, wait. My notes? Are they not notes? Doctor, we need explanations here. You first. Start at the beginning. It started with the Arecibo message. You're familiar? This is the thing the tinfoil hat people talk about? We sent some sort of message of peace into space? Yes, directed at M13. 
after we sent the message, we were getting back noise, or at least everyone else thought it was noise. We thought it had structure. Willow? It was mostly symbols that I couldn't recognize, but from time to time, there would be the letters A, V, A, I think. That's me. The symbols, are there a lot of diagonal lines, lower left to upper right? Yes. Those are my notes. It was sending you my notes. What was? What happened next? After 367 days, the noise went dark. We weren't getting anything anymore. When Gloria accidentally changed the station. Who is Gloria? Okay, so the data was cut off. It wasn't getting input. It had to start riffing, grabbing any transmission it could, so things got chaotic. Then, after 367 days, we got something kind of like a ping. It was one burst of just noise. Even Older Leaf attaching a device to the radio. Then nothing again. So we decided to get creative. We're using everything we've got to send one last broadcast of the message in the hopes that we can reacquire the signal. The big, malevolent thing. And then you showed up. Oh, shit! Radio telescope! Excuse me? Effie and Zebulon Mucklewain. Do those names mean anything to you? Those are my grandparents. Yes, they were, weren't they? What the hell? Daniel, does Willow tell a lot of stories about her grandparents? All the time. What's going on? Your grandfather had a pet pig named Pansy. God damn. How do you know all this? Boss, we've got fluctuations. Okay, there's no time. Guys, listen to me. It's all explained in my notes. We can't read your notes. They're written in Krolte. It's a 19th century Dutch shorthand. Google it. Fuck, you can't. The past sucks. Just look it up somehow. The transformer is going to blow any second now. This signal, this Arecibo message, you have to keep broadcasting it. We can't. We're almost out of juice, and we're about to get fired. Good. Get fired. People won't understand what you're doing anyway. Find a way to broadcast it. We can't get this much power or facilities like this. No, you're thinking about it wrong. It's not about the strength of the signal. It's about the number of iterations in space-time that you're broadcasting it. Think of it like triangulating a location. The longer you send the signal, the more data you'll get from us and vice versa. Us? Guys, the signal you sent into the sky, it was idiotic. We agree. Something heard it. Something heard it, but it doesn't understand you. It's trying to. God damn. Like two lovers in the dark, stumbling towards each other, hoping for skin. You have to keep broadcasting. We will. We will? Boss, here comes another one. You're going to need funding. Nobody is going to be crazy enough to fund this. Shit. Oh, it's 1976. Yes. Ha! Take all the money you have and invest in Apple computers. Trust me, you'll never have to write a grant again. What the hell? Trust me. Willow, I know your grandparents. Kind of. They would want you to have faith. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, something's happening. Remember everything I've said. Read my notes. Don't stop the signal! Okay, we're out. I have figured something out! Fuck you, Cosmos! Boss. I may not know what exactly I figured out, but I know I figured something out! Because I am not crazy! I am Pythagoras, motherfucker! Boss, we have problems. Oh, of course we do. What is it? We are now out of the big malevolent thing and are currently adrift in space. Hmm. Well, I guess we didn't think about sticking the landing, did we? I have sensor lock on Midnight Burger, but it's very far. We have limited thrust and very little oxygen. Shit. What's the plan? 
I'm going to have to put you to sleep again, boss. It's the only way to conserve oxygen. We put you to sleep, do one last burn toward the diner, and hope for the best. What are our chances? Calculating 50-50 at this point. Well, that's terrible odds. Did you record everything? Everything is in the logs. I figured something out, Leaflet. I know you did, boss. Okay. Let's do this. Adjusting oxygen mixture. The benefit of this plan is, if I die, Casper will be miserable for the rest of his life. That piece of shit can't live without me. Performing final burn. Slowly adjusting the oxygen levels back to normal. It'll open when it's ready. At what point do we break the news to her? Give her a minute. She's going to be disoriented. That thing just spit her out and then disappeared. I'm glad for both of those things, but I still have no idea what happened. <sighs> Am I alive? If not, heaven is shitty. You're alive. Go oh, get... Be out of here. Okay. One, two, three. Ugh. Ugh. It's good to see you, Ava. Leaf, that suit rules. I might wear it all the time. We may have to widen my booth. I'm just glad you're all right. You guys, I figured it out. I mean, kind of. Some of it. Anyway, I couldn't figure it out because, because it's like trying to recognize if someone's lying to you when you're lying to them at the same time. When you're, you're going too fast on the freeway, and so is everyone else, it's harder to know that you're speeding. Ava. Shh, just let me get this out. I've been trying to figure it out, but it's been trying to figure us out at the same time. What has? I don't know. The diner? No, no, not the diner. Something else. This is where it tries to reach out, where it tries to get to know us. It was right in front of my face. If you want to get to know someone, you find a place that's safe, where maybe you can have a cup of coffee and get to know each other. But here's the problem. What if you're a human and want to get to know an ant? You don't know what it's like to be an ant. You can't speak ant, even though you're hundreds of thousands of times more intelligent than an ant. So what do you do? Ava, you need to stop. You try a lot of things. Mostly you stay out of the way and watch. Sometimes you'll make sure nothing happens to your new friend. And if you get worried that your new friend is alone and afraid, you make it friends. Effie and Zebulon. But you don't know how to make a friend. You don't even know what friend means. So you reach out for whatever you've got. You hear stories told by an astronomer about her grandparents and how they were people that made her feel safe. And in your ham-fisted way, try and make them. So, Effie and Zebulon are simulations or something? No, because you're not an ant, you're a person. And you're so smart that you're an idiot. And without meaning to, you make a person. Two people. An artificial intelligence? Leif. Not artificial. An intelligence. A consciousness. Two of them. And you did it on accident. Ava, listen. Are they back yet? Effie? Zebulon? Uh, n no, not yet. They will be. They just went through the ringer like I did. It's a lot to process. Ava! What? Where is Casper? I need to punch him in the face and then tell him everything. Ava, Casper's gone. What? He's gone, Ava. What do you mean he's gone? We're floating in space. Did he hop on a jet ski? Ava, they took him. Took him? Who took him? You guys, who took him? Ava, Ava, can you hear us? We bore witness along with you, Ava. We feel both confused and yet somehow a fog has lifted. We have much to suss out after these revelations, but we feel... Different and imbued somehow with meaning. Much light needs to be shed. 
Ava? Ava, what has transpired? listening to Midnight Burger, y'all. Be sure and tune in this time next month for more adventures in the vastness. And if time and tide roil you too harshly, or diurnal courses leave you with no safe havens, just remember we're out there somewhere looking for you. We open at six. The Fable and Folly Network, where fiction producers flourish. It begins, as terrible things often do, with a knife. People of Herta, chosen children of the night, a lost soul has come to us. I'm not sure if I can do this. It's always better if you just do it quick. You came to St. Kilda to escape your past, but the past isn't so easy to outrun. You always say you're changing, but underneath you're just the same. She was a child, Lockie. You liar! Did you really believe this community would accept you? I think you're meant to be here. A little bird told me that you're a liar. All of this, it comes with a cost, Lucky. Did you really believe you could find redemption. The time for excuses is over. The Secret of St. Kilda. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to season one now, and remember, there is no change without sacrifice. <laughs>